Hello guys, welcome back to TSBEC TV and welcome to LRO 2019. Let's check out some of the highlights of this year's show. We've got Mr. Land Rover photo album in his usual spot. The prime office. parking by the arena. Um, I've just filmed yesterday a chat with you about the new Defender. So that'll be going up on the channel at some point and you're doing various bits, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Believe it or not, I'm actually working here. I'm not looking through uh, the classifieds for some, you know, I don't know, <laughs> spare parts. No, I'm actually communicating with fellow people who are coming over. So uh, interviews, lots of running around. Cool, it's always great to chat with you. And yeah, uh, just giving you some stickers, so I'm going to stop yeah. by later. Yeah, it's on the back. Oh, it's already one on the back? One of them is. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Got Tearspec TV sticker now on the I wanted world's to have most famous one. Disco 3. I wanted to have it like but it wouldn't fit the other one. It wasn't long enough, so I put that one there instead. Sweet. And I have the other one elsewhere. I'm going to have to get a picture of that later on. Thank you very much. No problem. By the entrance, as usual, we've got a variety of Land Rovers, old and new. Yeah. Particularly like this old Series 1, which looks like it is literally just rolled out of the factory. Absolutely immaculate. Then over there, we've got more Series 1s and 2s. This one here has got hiding a 3.9 litre V8 under the bonnet, which is rather nice, you don't see that very much. Got some unique bits and bobs here, campers, fire trucks, etc. 50th anniversary edition here. This is rather cool. Check out the interior on this one. Table will set up for breakfast. Nice little bench seat here. Very lovely. Then over here we've got some newer bits, P38, really nice dark green Disco 4, really like the colour on that. Some more Series Land Rovers here. And over in this area we've got the usual array of spares. The other row tent over here, where yesterday we had our fan meet up at 1 o'clock, we're doing the same again today, so thanks if you stopped by for that. I'm breathing in some lovely diesel smoke from this Defender now. We've got the LRO. Disco 3 and Brick Park Defender there. We've got some Ultra 4 vehicles lining up along here. Which will presumably be out in the arena later today. If you've never been to LRO before, this gives you an idea of the sort of stuff that you can actually get here. You can pretty much build an entire Land Rover from the spares that you can buy here. Including newer bits. Then we've got mud stuff. Really nice interior bits from them. Got some of their stuff on my Defender. Then over on the front runner stand, we've got a really nice Disco 5 with some overlanding kit on the roof of it. It's really cool to see more of these here this year. I think they're becoming more popular with this kind of crowd now. And I just think they look so cool when they're actually kitted out. Over here we have Exmoor trim and they always have some stunning examples on their stand and this year is no exception. Got a really nice Range Rover Classic here. Don't see many of those around. Defender here that's had some interior stuff done on it. Or well, pretty much all the vehicles here I guess have had interior work done to them like this Heritage Edition which has some really nice tweed seats and dash. Really really nice work they've done there. And then this Series 1 is particularly special because not only is it a Series 1 but it's a Series 1 from 1949. So you don't get much older than this in terms of Land Rovers. And you can see that it's basically been left untouched. So all these dents, scratches, scars, whatever, are <laughs> all the way from the 40s, I guess. What they have done is put new seats in it, which look really smart. They don't look too out of place, actually. Obviously, they're a lot newer than the rest of the vehicle. But look really, really smart. Nice dark green color to match this beautifully preserved. Well, preserved, but you know what I mean. Certainly captures a lot of... Uh, well, let's say this has a lot of stories to tell, I suppose. Here we go, this Defender. Leather trimmed all the way around. It's actually for sale. So if anyone's interested in that. And around this corner we've got an awesome kind of Spectre style 110 here. This is just the stuff of dreams. Love the way this thing looks. So, so cool. I didn't actually know that these tyres mounts basically flip up as well, so you can put stuff in there. It's quite cool. Here we have Synchro Gearboxes and Team Synchro Racing, of which we are a sponsor. We've got the Ultra 4 car here, with TSBEC TV sticker up there. 
And if we come around the other side, it's rather busy here. But TSBEC TV keying on there, which there's a really awesome story to tell about that as well. I will see if I can grab Shabs actually. I've managed to grab you. You're absolutely swamped by people, I see. Yes, <laughs> always. But can you give us like a one minute or 30 second overview of what you've changed on the Ultra 4 car? Sure, I can. I can try and remember. You've changed quite a lot since last year. Yeah, a hell of a lot. Um, so, at the beginning of this year, um, we went testing with the truck and went to Walters Arena before the, I think it was two weeks before the first race. And um, when I made some engine modifications and up the power and then went out and did some testing and I managed to blow both dips in five seconds or so. So 10 days before the first race we had to do a massive engine uh, axle swap to Nissan axles um, before we could actually get going and, and do some racing. So that was a bit of a nightmare. Um, for the changes I'll show you around and we'll take yeah, a look. Sure. Um, we're now running a BMW six-speed gearbox um, in there. Just wanted to play around with the ratios. We were running the R380, which held up really, really well. Um, massively underrated gearbox. But thought I'd try the the BMW six-speed. They are a much stronger gearbox, but it's got that extra gear, and it means that we can play with ratios. So we've chucked that in there. Um, we've got obviously the new axles. We've got a new Atom nine locker in the front. Uh, different wheels and tires to suit, or wheels at least to suit. Uh, the engine's been, is the same, but we've dropped it down in the engine bay much lower, so that'll give us a bit more, uh, better centre of gravity and, and balance the car out a little bit better. Um, and then heaps and heaps of other little things. We've got new terra firma factory racing bypass shocks all round, which has made a huge difference. Um, like if you watch some of the videos of ours more recently, where we're doing the jumps and stuff, it lands so much better comparable to last year, where the car was just all over the place um, and really tough to drive. Um, and yeah, it's just come a long way in such a short period of time, just in this year alone, or even in the last nine months or so. Um, it's just come a long way, and, That's why and the team's come a long way, and I'm start learning to drive a little bit more, and and figuring it out, and having having less uh, on your side moments, you know. So um, we're getting there with it, and it, it's changing, it's coming along, and, and we're enjoying it, which is the main thing as well. So yeah. Awesome, quite pleased. Um, and could you also tell the viewers the story behind the key ring? Because I don't think we've, I know that happened. It's funny you should mention ago. actually. It, it was it was one of these. So we have these on the on the bonnet pins, and um, and they hold the, the the bonnet pin down, and they should. And I still haven't done it even now. I still haven't done it. Um, I should tie them, cable tie them, or something. But we we, we took the bonnet off for, for one reason or another, and um, and lost these both of them um, and uh, we've got nothing else and luckily we've got the Terzbeck TV uh, keyring which I had up here and this was the only thing that I could use so we took it off here took the little keyring dinghy off and managed to get it through the hole on the bonnet pin and that lasted us the race I think we would have been like genuinely knackered because at one point I think it was King of France we were driving along and forgot to put these in and the bonnet just came flying up and, and it's a fiberglass bonnet and I didn't really want to destroy it. But yeah, that saved the day, which was quite funny, and obviously I thought of you guys, and I was like, really appreciative. It's so cool. You told us that last year, actually, but we forgot to like get it on camera, yeah. and it was just so cool to hear that. Yeah, so that that's now like your lucky key ring. Right? Yeah, so we've kept it, I'm keeping it there, it's on the emergency stop as well, so. <laughs> but, uh, so, so cool. Yeah, no, that was uh, super handy, super handy. And how's things so, yeah. going on the stand? You look really busy. Yeah, it's been really busy from, from Synchro point of view, yeah, it's been really busy. It's a great show, the sun's shining for a change as well, and um, which is nice and yeah it's, it's a nice positive vibe everybody's happy because of the sun shining so yeah it's going to be it's still early today but yeah it's going to be a good day today as well and we're going to take the car out and the side's going to have a play with it um, I, did, I had to do a bit of repair and i managed to break the throttle pedal last night um, and stamped on it a little bit too hard um, and we've got steering issue but we'll figure it out and, and so i can go and have a play and, and uh, yeah and enjoy the rest of the day and the weekend yeah, sweet. Well, I have to get some footage of you out in the arena as well. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, uh, yeah, I'll leave you alone because you're clearly very, very busy. But thanks no, for the update. No worries. Good to see you, as ever.
Moving on, we're at the bowler stand where we've got a 110 and a 90 variant um, of their insanely modified rally cars, which are somehow road legal. And they use the V6 and V8 engines from JLR. You still want one? <laughs> yeah, I'll take it right now. <laughs> got a 90 over here. This is really cool. I can imagine this would be a lot of fun on a rally stage. So, so cool. Got to have a drive in one of those one day. They also do modifications for road vehicles, bumpers, <laughs> rims, etc. Oh, this one's got a nice interior as well. Yeah, so, so cool all around this company, what they are doing. So this is Chris from hey ORE. How is everyone? Who we're working with lately. We did their wheel, uh, not wheel carrier, what's it called? Um, Single point wheel carrier. No, the steering guard, that's ah, what we did first. Guard. But this first, is the new product. Point, yeah, this is the new product, this is the next product. So it will be available for retail in two weeks time. We've just started mass producing it. Um, so in, in, in our manufacturing facility based in Burton-on-Trent. Uh, so unique design, we have a little look down here. This is one of the, to my knowledge, this is the only wheel carrier, single point wheel carrier in the marketplace that has uh, completely independent bearings and all the load transferred right through to the cross member here. So there's a couple on the market and there's the, there's various versions where they bolt to the bodywork and it can twist the bodywork with the weight of the wheel, especially when people start upgrading the wheels and putting larger tires on it. So we come up with a design and a solution that would eliminate drilling any more fixings in the bodywork and bolts to existing fixings on your cross member. So the important thing to do if you are interested in one is make sure you've got a solid uh, rear cross yeah, well, that, that's like chassis. half the reason I've just fitted a new one to mine is because uh, I knew this was was gone on the way. Obviously, I found out it was pretty rotten anyway, so it needed doing. That's but, great. So you guys have fitted a new one. So you yeah, it's got a brand new cross member on mine. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just show you a quick demonstration. So this is one of our new project vehicles. It's not ready, as you can see. First thing we did is took the rear door card off, and if you have a little look around here, you can see the stress of a standard boost wheel. Uh, that, that came with the vehicle of how it's cracked the door. The, the guys in the workshop have just tacked it up. You can see we've gone over it with some primer. So the door was completely flexing with the weight of the wheel, which is, is as we know, a common issue. So our wheel carrier solves this issue because there is zero load transferred. If you have a look around here to here. So that that shoot, that 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 vibration is supposed to happen because we have a rubber mount there, and the idea is you're not transferring that load to the door. Um, so we do a quick open and close. You can see how the linkage works. Now this is completely adjustable. It's all stainless steel. We've had a, a guy in Denmark, funny enough, who's had one of these and he's had it on his for six months. He had the Mark V. This is now the Mark VIII. We've had 30 guys from our beta testing uh, team who've been testing this intensively. They've been driving over speed bumps, doing all sorts of stuff, trying to break it and they've yet managed to break one, which is obviously now why we can, now why we're confident that we can actually retail this product. Um, so, quick demonstration, and I can do this on camera without falling off. I think I know what's coming. <laughs> there we go. One. You would do that with a standard one, exactly right. Awesome, thank you very much. Well, really look forward to fitting that. We'll be doing that, I guess, next weekend when we get back. Um, we've got this sitting in the workshop, literally just waiting to be fitted to mine. Get it fitted to TV. There's so. loads of people that want to see this. We've got plenty of interest at the show. Well, we um, were super impressed with the steering guard, so I, I, you know, I'm sure this will be yeah, the same. Yeah, this obviously comes with our standard five-year warranty, thousand-hour salt spray powder coating as well, which comes with all our products. So again another unique sort of um, product we've developed with a, a coating company just for our products. So yeah, that's all there's to say really. Awesome. Can you give us any teasers about upcoming products or we're not allowed to talk about that? We're not allowed to talk about that because it's Tears Back TV. <laughs> so we've got a rear step, which is the worst kept secret ever because we've, I got told off by our marketing manager because I released some images of our anti-slip powder coating, which 
and Nissi may be familiar with this because it's a similar coating to tank armor the anti-slip on the top when the guys are getting in and out of the tanks so we have developed some products that will have a section of anti-slip on top of our standard powder coating for our side steps and rear steps did I say side steps then we uh, can bleep this out we've got we've got we've got side steps coming as well they're gonna be with a five mil wall they're gonna look very similar to OE standard type but they're gonna have the OE improvements the powder coating and uh, all the usual refinements that come with it in terms of proper instructions, fixing kits, etc. And also all the bolts come in a sack, which we know this guy likes bolts in a sack. What was it? Smells like harvest? It smells like harvest, yeah. <laughs> so it's great to chat with Chris at the Land River Lady stand next year. Oori will have their own stand. But there's some new unique stuff here as well. Pink, bright pink defender. Really nice disc. I had a quick look at this last year as well. Really nice uh, custom engine cover there and a few other nice bits around as well. So this is Louis, and you have your own YouTube channel, right? Yeah. Do you want to turn around and show your t-shirt so everyone can see? Mike and, Mike and Louis' off-road adventures, and now you're going to show us around your 90, right here. Yeah? Yeah, so up there we've got our roof tent with a pipe with our night heater. And then this is our electric and our hose when we have a shower. We've got our tailgated tyre table from America. And then we have our Ridge Monkey jerry can. We've got a few, two Ridge Monkey pans. Um, we've both got cutlery sets. And this is our awning. It's also got sides. Oh wow, you've got a lot of stuff in here. Yeah. And then in here we've got our fridge which slides out on there. Our travel buddy pie oven. And on this side we've got another side locker. So this is all our recovery stuff. We've got two walkie talkies, a spade which we haven't used yet. Most of the stuff in here we haven't really had to use yet. And then our little flags up here. Awesome. We have solar panels up there. Wow, so you're properly kitted out. Yeah. Have you been on lots of adventures with this? Yeah, a few. Where have you been to? So, Dorset Steam Fair, Big Bike Bash, and a few other places that I'm just trying to remember. Silver Spring. Yeah. Wales, yeah. Have you been awesome. Have a look inside. So what's been your favourite part of the show? Probably um, seeing that pretty much every vehicle is a Land Rover <laughs> and just there's the few little odd ones that aren't. But it's always cool that they're all different isn't it? Yeah. No two are the same. Mm -hmm. Have you been filming for your channel? Yeah. Should we put a link in the description so people can subscribe? Yeah. Should we do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do that. So that was Mike and Louie's off-road adventures. Louie has his own YouTube channel, so I'll put a link down in the description um, below. It's always cool to meet young fans like that because they're so enthusiastic. But now we're already kind of running out of time and people are already leaving. Yeah. Um, and we've got to go to the fan meetup at one o'clock. What time is it now? Like 12.30? Yeah, just about. Uh, and we've still got a bunch to film. So this is the mad rush that always comes in the afternoon on a yeah. Sunday. Here we've got the Storm Tuning Stand, Blue Discovery Girl, um, this crazy thing. We've got the Tough Rock Discovery 2, which has a ton of bits on it. As you can see, looks awesome. And then the M57 Defender, which we filmed a video with. Don't know whether that's out yet, but yeah, either way, we have filmed a video with this. And this thing is absolutely insane, even though it looks rather ordinary, but it certainly isn't. Then over here, we've got a Range Rover Classic with a TD5 engine in it. You don't see that every day, but I bet this thing is a lot of fun, especially when you get the classic looks of the Range Rover with the engine or the TD5 engine in it. Really, really cool. Got it. Would love to experience that at some point. Then we've got the Camel Trophy stand. Always a fan favourite. Disco 5, Disco 5. It's really cool to see more of these here this year. As I said earlier, they're becoming more popular. 
because um, obviously disco threes and fours are really popular now. And I think disco fives are starting to grow on people a bit. People do not realise how good that vehicle is. I have no idea what this is, I think it's a club or something, yeah. More Land Rovers. Nice Series 1, Series 2. Nice ambulance there. Oh, Mountain Rescue, sorry. Then we've got the 101 Club. With this, always seems to take the front centre stage. I can't remember what it's called, but it is an absolute monster. Could you imagine off-roading in that, or us being able to do a video on that thing? That would be so, so cool. And of course, some beautiful 101s as usual. Ultimate camping trip vehicle there. We've got the Series 1 Club and the Wild Land Rover photo album in his element. Hey. We'll take turns. Yeah, go ahead. We've got Series 1s. That is a beautiful colour. Just all around beautiful thing. More Series 1s. Yeah, in the centre of the... So we've now done our fan meetup for today. Thanks to everyone that stopped by. Now we're going to hear from Ed Cobley, three times Defender Challenge champion. Hi, my name's Ed Cobley, and uh, this is Skippy 2.0, my new rally car. Um, so I've been driving for some amazing uh, UK rally raid teams over my uh, past driving years, and decided a couple of years ago that it was about time I built and designed my own uh, Defender. So this Defender has been in our family since uh, 2005, used in the Land Rover owner uh, Morocco trips with my father, uh, been used in training with Pro Tracks, and uh, unfortunately got stolen. Fortunately it broke down and uh, we managed to get the car back, uh, which then it sat at uh, our off-road centre for around six years, slowly having bits taken off it, being used as a shelf. And uh, just last year I decided to uh, take the vehicle and uh, turn it into my new rally car as I haven't got a Defender at that time to race, so it's a sad times. So uh, I'm working with GRP 4x4 uh, on the bonnet. Um, they've done the bonnet for me. I'm working with this great British tyre company called Devante with their Territora, a, a true all-terrain tyre, true grip tyre. Um, protection and performance have done me the uh, T45 roll cage, uh, which has ticked the uh, FIA, MSA and French regulations. Uh, Ali Sport, great company we all know of. I've done me the radiator, the uh, main uh, air intercooler, and uh, also done me power steering tank, air boxes, and header tank as well. Some amazing aluminium work under there. I'm working with Fox at the moment to uh, get the shock absorber set up right. Uh, Shabs from uh, Synchro, he's done a transfer box for me, one of his unbreakable ultras. Uh, we'll see about that. Uh, so hopefully next year we'll be in the main arena. We'll be attempting to jump the Devante uh, PR van in the main arena, doing some passenger rides with the Land Rover owner show and then I'll be doing some British Rally Championships uh, I'll be doing uh, hopefully and fingers crossed some of the stuff in Europe some of the Decemes rallies uh, doing some French, some, some French events and some events with some of my Dutch friends as well uh, so a lot to keep an eye out there on the Facebook page and uh, yeah hopefully we can get this Defender moving like we did the previous ones thank you now it is time for us to do our annual traditional car park or should I say car park walk where we pick out a few of our favorites. Firstly is this Range Rover Sport which is really really muddy which is always cool to see and then we have a bright green Defender 110 which is sort of my kind of thing. I remember when I was like 18 that my dream Defender was just something like this that was bright green. I think my tastes have matured slightly since then but it's still rather cool to see something like this that stands out so much. I think it's quite cool. We've got a really cool kind of tipper truck 130 I guess that is but that looks really smart how that's been made like that a lot. So initially this 90 looks awesome with his beefy tyres uh, however I don't really envy his cross member. It sort of makes mine look alright or my old one alright. That is not so good. But tyres, awesome. Rather unique colour on this 90. Quite cool though, sort of sandy beige colour. Awesome looking 101 ambulance with some very very chunky tyres. That is really cool. <laughs> Rather cool modification here is these steps on the spare tire. I've never seen that before on a Defender. And then also the colour on this is really, really nice. I think that's the, I can't remember what it's called, but the, the Huey colour basically. It looks like it to me, but that's really nice. That is a well kept classic. Nice Range Rover three door there. That is very, very smart. 
So we were on our way out and we spotted this. This defender just drove past us and it has our mud flaps on. Our tough rock tier spec TV mud flaps. How cool is that? It's the first time we've ever seen them out in the wild. So before the video ends, we'd just like to say a huge thank you for the incredibly warm welcome and amazing reception we received at this year's LRO show. If you stopped us for a chat or you came to either of the fan meets on Saturday or Sunday, then we say a huge thanks to you because although LRO is a um, an amazing opportunity for us to create content, obviously, for the channel, uh, the best part for us actually is getting to meet you guys. And so if we come away from the weekend with maybe not the, the content that we imagined uh, in our heads, then in a way it doesn't really matter because we got to meet so many of you guys and hear what you had to say about us and uh, that you really enjoy watching our videos, which is just the best part. It's very humbling, very heartwarming and very, very motivating um, to hear that from you guys. And that is absolutely, without a doubt, the best part about traveling over for the LRO show. Um, but we do always try, obviously, to make the best content we can it's very, very difficult at LRO, at LRO um, because you've got tons of background noise, um, you've got this copyrighted music blaring out of the speakers in the stadium, you've got engine noises, you've got people talking, you've got people walking into your shots, um, and you've got basically one and a half days to do it because uh, everyone starts leaving at lunchtime on a Sunday. Uh, and then you've got to try and coordinate with all the people you want to film with if you're going to collaborate with other people. Uh, to try and get those videos sorted uh, and those people are, are usually quite busy as well so it's it's absolutely crazy it's a crazy weekend for us um, and we're usually left uh, pretty speechless by the end of it because it's it's an amazing weekend for us but it's also very very busy and very crazy to try and manage and organize all of that so um, we always try and do something a little bit different uh, to keep it interesting for you guys every year we go so we don't just pump out the same video every year and I think we've done that this year we just didn't get as much as we would have liked because like I say we were every year we think we're prepared and then it's just like being hit in the face with a chair um, in terms of how chaotic it is um, so we really hope that you've enjoyed the content this year so far there's one more video coming from LRO, LRO actually which is not as action-packed it won't be for everyone but I filmed it with Land Rover photo album who you may know from Instagram, which I think is very interesting. Um, hopefully you will agree with me. And moving on from that, it is pretty much business as usual here. We've got three modification videos planned for the TD5 Defender coming up very soon, as well as, like I said, one more LRO video, and then tons more stuff to come after that as well. Um, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes, so you have plenty to look forward to for the rest of this year. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks very much for the amazing reception at LRO. And we will see you in the next video.